وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أوسيكم نفسي بتقوى الله In the previous uh, khutbah, we talked about other Muslims calling other Muslims kafir, a takfir. And we, I mentioned a particular group of people called the Khawarij. And some of our young brothers have asked me, what is this word Khawarij? You talked about this group Khawarij and we don't know what, what this Khawarij is, who these people are. And Many of the elders know why Mesh al Khawarij, who they are. But our young people who need to know who they are, perhaps they weren't here when we talked about this two years ago. So we're going to summarize for them and we're going to mention at the end why it's important to know this. <laughs> in a hadith narrated by Imam Muslim in the Sahih, in the chapter of Bab al Zakah. <coughs> And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam was distributing money from the ghanima, from the booty, <coughs> the spoils of war. And a man came to him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and said, Why don't you distribute this money fairly? He said to, say, he said to the Prophet, Why don't you distribute this money fairly? In other words, he's accusing the Prophet of not distributing the money fairly. La ilaha illallah. And if there was anybody more fairer than our Prophet, is there anybody more fairer than our Prophet? No. Allah has given him and trusted him with the Qur'an, let alone some money. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam said to this man, if I'm not going to be fair, adil, then who is? And then the man walked away. He didn't even say sorry. He didn't even say anything at all. Very rough, extreme. And this is the point of the khutbah, extremism in our religion is alien, but is not new. Okay, listen, our young boys and girls who are listening, and inshallah, those listening to the recording, extremism in their religion is nothing new. It appeared at the time of the Prophet, and this is the beginning of it. As the man walked away, Umar ibn Khattab got up and said, Ya Rasulullah, let me kill this man. This man is a hypocrite, accusing you of doing these things? And the Prophet said, no. And in another narration, Khalid ibn Walid got up and said, Ya Rasulullah, let me deal with this hypocrite. <coughs> and our Prophet said, no. <coughs> look, at, look at the way of our Prophet. He didn't allow other Muslims to kill the Muslims. That's not the way of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam has the man walked away the Prophet looked and the Prophet said something. And this, what the Prophet said, is very important now for us living in this age. Very important, has links. The Prophet is talking about what's happening now. The Prophet said, from this man, he said, there's going to come a group of people. Listen carefully. From this man, who said, I am not distributing the money fairly. From this man, there's going to come a group of people at the end of time. Or in one narration, there's going to come a group, a group of people from this man. And they're going to read the Qur'an. Yeah. They're not reading any of the book. They're reading the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is not passing their throats. Or in one narration, the Qur'an is not penetrating their hearts. It's just lip service. That's all they know of the Qur'an. And the Prophet began to describe them who these people are. And the Prophet said, these people are going to bring trouble for the Muslims. So we fast forward to the time of Sayyidina Ali. After the Prophet has passed away, after Abu Bakr has had the Khilafah, after Umar has had the Khilafah, and after Sayyidina Uthman has had the Khilafah, Sayyidina Ali then has the Khilafah. And the Khilafah is the rule of Allah, not waving black flags and doing crazy things. And that's the Khilafah. So then, at the time of Sayyidina Ali, a group emerges in large numbers who then start to call, and they're Muslim, by the way, they're Muslim. They, call, they start to call Sayyidina Ali, who's the cousin of the Prophet, who became Muslim very early on, 
who knows the Quran, who knows the Sunnah, who from the Sahaba of the Prophet, who the Prophet married his daughter to, from the Sahaba. They began to call Sayyidina Ali, you are a kafir. You are a muqtadir. You are an innovator. You do not, you do not know the deen. You are ruling by other than what Allah is ruling. Look at the extremism. Muslims. And, said, and then these people began to move away from the Prophet, from, from Sayyidina Ali. And they began to stop praying behind him. See, I told you last week, the signs of extremism is when people stop praying behind other people. So you stop praying behind Sayyidina Ali. And then you start making talks about it and start interfering in his khutbah. Standing up and challenging him. And then what they do? They then say, in Iraq, or ma ashfa al yawm al-ams. They're in Iraq and then they say, we can't stay here, we're going to move away and they go to the deserts of Iraq. More than 1,000 years ago, nothing new. And then they began to establish a dawla, a khilafah in the desert. Like, it's amazing when you read the history, how it's all the same thing. It's the same, nothing really changed. But our people are ignorant, of, they do not know what's going on, what the Prophet has said. So they said, Now Ali then, he sends Ibn Abbas, al alim the scholar of Islam, Ibn Abbas, to go and talk to these people. In one narration, 12,000 of them. We're not talking about 200 or 300, 12,000 people huh, have become extreme at the time of Sayyidina Ali. And they go and said, Ibn, Ibn Abbas speaks to them for long, for, long, for long hours with proof in the Quran and the Sunnah, trying to prevent their radicalization. <laughs> and then many of them turn back. Many of them leave that way. But Allah stay. And then they, these people, they began to start roaming around, start invading other places, <laughs> invading other towns, and start spreading their understanding of Islam. And they grab you and they say to you, what do you think of Abu Bakr? And what do you think of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab? And what do you think of this? And, what? and then when you, and you ask you a question, what do you think of Ali? And if you say, he's a, oh, he's very good, he's from the Sahaba, the Prophet loved him. If you say these things, wrong answer. What do they do? They behead you. They chop your head off. Uh, you're either with us or against us. This is the Really amazing, Allah, yani, when I'm reading these things, I can't, yani, and anybody else can see what I'm seeing, it's the same, there's history repeating itself. And our Prophet told us it's going to happen. Sayyidina Ali has enough, and Sayyidina Ali says an army against them, to deal with them. Because he said he's been polite, he said the ulama, they haven't understood. And they started killing Muslims, they started killing Muslims. They killed some of the Sahaba, who were still alive at that time. They began to kill men, women and children. If you don't believe what they believe, they start to kill you. And then Sayyidina Ali sends an army and he deals with them. And they're defeated. And these people became known as the Khawarij. The Khawarij. Okay, you, you could type it up and do your own research. Read about the Khawarij. But some of them survived. And one of them, Ibn Muljim, went down in history as one of the survivors. And he went on to kill Sayyidina Ali. He went back and he, he assassinated Sayyidina Ali. And while he was killing Sayyidina Ali, he was mentioning a verse of the Quran. He's saying there's no, there's no rule except the rule of Allah. Not for you to rule, O Ali. Because he understood a particular verse of the Quran wrong. So he killed Sayyidina Ali. And, he was, and then he was executed. Nothing new. But what's interesting is that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in many ahadith in Sahih Muslim, in Muslim Imam Ahmed, in many hadiths, the Prophet has given us a description of these people who are going to come towards the end of time. And the point of this is that to protect the parents here listening, the parents uh, who may be out of touch what's going on, we don't know, what, don't know what the youth are doing, for the first to listen to these signs. This is what the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the signs of the extremists. Of the Khawarij that are going to come. So listen carefully, these are the signs. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, from the first signs, okay, and, if, and the young people need to be careful of other people who have these signs, who want to talk to them and bring them to their understanding. Or if they're looking at YouTube, 
or reading books or whatever, if these signs that our Prophet mentioned are there, stop listening, move away. So the first sign our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that these people who are going to come, are going to appear, will read the Qur'an in the best of ways. But the Qur'an won't penetrate their hearts. They won't have, they won't have an understanding of the Qur'an. They can recite the Qur'an from, from cover to cover. Quote verses like ease, but they won't penetrate their hearts. They won't live by it. And another description, the Prophet said that they were going, it's very interesting, they're going to kill other Muslims. They're going to kill other Muslims. يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلَ الْإِسْلَامِ And then the Prophet said, they're going to quote hadith, nice words from the Quran. They're going to give khutbas and talk and quote verses of the Quran, talking about jihad, talking about this, talking about, and they're going to quote hadith. They're not going to quote the Bible or the Gospel. They're going to quote hadith and Quran. You have to be very careful. And then the Prophet said, Ahdathul Asnan. It's very interesting what the ulama say. What does this word mean? Ahdathul Asnan. The ulama say that the Prophet here meant that these people are going to be young in age. Interesting. Young in age. Young people. They're not going to attract the elders who have hikmah. The elders who don't, who not, who not, don't act by emotion, who have ilm for a lot of the time, who are wise, they're going to attract the young people. That's what the Prophet said. They're going to be young people. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam meant that these people have no wisdom and have no patience. And then the Prophet said, Sufuha al-Islam, al-Ahlam, Sufuha al-Ahlam. What does that mean? It means they're going to be small intellects, not very bright. Not intelligent, not able to debate, not able to wait and think, hang on, this is wrong. I can't kill another Muslim. I can't chop his head off. I can't leave my parents and go, and go and do jihad. I can't do this. Young intellect, small, not very bright, not able to understand things. And the Prophet said, they're going to read the Quran, they're going to quote verses of the Quran to back their manhaj, to back their way up. And the verses are against them. They're going to quote verse of the Quran and it's going to be against them. They're going to quote verse of the Quran that will reveal against non Muslims. They're going to quote the same verse against the Muslims. And then the Prophet that don't be fooled by the way they pray and their fasting and their, and their reading of the Quran because. When you compare your prayer to their prayer, they're going to be praying all night, fasting all day, reading the Quran. This is very difficult for people because this is the outward sign of piety. People praying, reading the Quran, fasting, this is outward. This is a good sign. But for these people, it's a dangerous sign because it's the extremists that the Prophet mentioned. They're going to do a lot of worship. And then our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned some physical descriptions like they're going to shave their heads. Shave and heads. That's what the Prophet says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet said they're going to come from Najd. And the ulama have differed about the geographic location of Najd. But our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith, in a beautiful hadith narrated by Imam Muslim and Bukhari, the Prophet made dua for two places. Specifically, in this particular hadith, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yamanina. Oh Allah, bless the lands of Sham. Sham. And Sham, not just Damascus, it's the area surrounding. <laughs> and Yemen. And somebody stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, wa najdina, an najd, which is a place of the east, according to some of the ulama. And the Prophet remained silent. <laughs> and the, the Prophet then made dua for Yemen and Syria. Three times, but refused three times to make dua for Najd, a particular area. And then uh, the Prophet said that from this place there's going to come tribulations, fitna. And the ulama have said that the khawarij, these extremists who appeared at the time of the Prophet and appeared then in numbers at the time of Sayyidina Ali came from this, from this particular area. And they've spread now. And now they have the power of Facebook and Twitter and these type of things, very dangerous now for our young boys. And our young girls. 
So we need to protect ourselves, inshallah, the Prophet has predicted. And a, a, a very scary prediction, a prophecy for, from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa the Prophet has said that these extremists, they're going to come and be defeated. And then they're going to appear again and be defeated. I'm going to appear again and be defeated. In one hadith, more than, more than 10 times. In one hadith, the Prophet said more than 20 times throughout the history. They're not going to go away. But then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned something very interesting. Very interesting for us to pay attention to. And a warning for our young boys. The Prophet said that until the last of them, these extremists for Muslims, until the last of them from my ummah will be defeated, with who? Will be defeated with the Dajjal. That these extremists now, that they are going to remain until the end of time, until the Dajjal appears, and when the Dajjal is defeated by Sayyidina Isa, then these extremists will be with the, be with the Dajjal and be defeated. So this is a warning now against extremism. Warning against people who want to make takfir of other Muslims, or want to cause to criticize other Muslims. If you have a particular understanding, then you keep it quiet, keep it to yourself. But if you want to stop brainwashing <coughs> young people, like the Prophet said, small intellects, like the Prophet said, quoting verses of the Quran, out of context, no ulama, they have no knowledge. You want to go and kill, like the people that killed the Sahaba, now they're killing people in Yemen, and killing, they've been killing people in Iraq, and now they're killing non-Muslims now, journalists and so forth, you know, it's never ending. And the Prophet said, they're going to continue to the last of the world, defeated with the Dajjal. So extremism is a preparation for the Dajjal. In other words, the Prophet saying, if you don't understand what I'm trying to say, the Prophet is saying that these extremists are preparing for the Dajjal. Are pushing people away from religion. And the Dajjal <laughs> likes this, they're a preparation. Because they're going to be with the Dajjal, defeated with the Dajjal. The Prophet is saying they're not going to be with us. They're going to be with the Dajjal and they're going to be defeated with the Dajjal at the end of time. It's hadith narrated by Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So please, inshallah, do your research. Young people, go back, read about these extremists, the Khawarij, and protect yourselves. Because there's certain key words that extremists like to use. If you have these words in your head, you'll be okay. The word like you is calling people kafir. If you find another Muslim calling another Muslim kafir, or a person you think is a Muslim calling kafir, that's the first sign, stay away. The second sign, if, the, if they start saying that this person is a, does a bid'ah, this word bid'ah, B-I-D-D-A, bid'ah. If they hear the, if you see these people say this word a lot, stay away. Stay away. Because this is the, the Khawarij said the same thing about Sayyidina Ali and the Muslims. And they killed the ulama, they killed the Imam al Nasai. From the six books of hadith, Imam al-Nasai is one of the greatest of the ulama. <coughs> they killed him as well. No compassion. Another word is that shirk. It's a very interesting word. People who like to call other Muslims, they do shirk. Be careful. Mushrikeen. Mushrikeen. Shirk, shirk, shirk. If you, these three words, if you stay away from people who like to say these words all the time, as if there's nothing else to talk about, but these three things, stay away and you'll be protected inshallah ta'ala. And, you, and the parents, be careful who your children listen to on computers. Look, tell them, ask your children, let me see what, what, you're, what you're doing. And you have these Facebook and Twitter and accounts, and now people are making Twitter accounts, <coughs> reporting bad things, and, uh, 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 and sharing videos of brothers <coughs> are being killed in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq. We don't want to see brothers being killed. I don't want to see. I know for what's happening in Palestine, which is the real problem. And this is a distraction. And these people, these khawarij, are only a distraction from the main problem. <coughs> we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to remove our internal differences from between ourselves and Allah Azza wa Jal give us ihtiram the akhir ihtiram al-ulama, ihtiram al-madahib, ihtiram al-fuqaha, ihtiram al-ikhtilaf al-ray, ihtiram. I will not agree, but we have to agree to disagree, inshallah. But we, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to call you kafir. You have your view, I have my view, Alhamdulillah, the Alameen. al the land is wide, vast. No takfir, no tabdi'a, and no tashriq, inshaAllah ta'ala. Have a good opinion of other Muslims. Have a good opinion of other Muslims, inshaAllah ta'ala. So this is a summary 
of the khutbah I did a few years ago for our young people, inshallah. If anybody has any questions, or the parents have any questions, or our young people have any questions, then you come and see me, inshallah ta'ala. I'm here. I live here as well. So no excuses, inshallah ta'ala. عباد الله يعلم أنه لأنفع للإنسان في هذا الزمان مثل في حصان